Hi guys, Nicolette here with Insomnicap Media. Today, Brian and I are going to talk to Alex Liddell, CEO and founder of Efficient Power Conversion. He's going to talk to us about some of the myths behind GAN, some of the strides it's making, a new textbook, and some advice for emerging engineers. So stay tuned. Hi guys, I'm Nicolette with Insomnica, and today Brian and I are talking with Alex Lidow. He is the CEO and founder of Efficient Power Conversion, a company that's making some serious strides in the GAN space right now. So Alex, thank you for joining us. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and about EPC? So, uh, you know, I've been around for a long time. I started in the power conversion industry in, uh, in 45 years ago, actually, uh, developing some of the very first power MOSFETs. Uh, and uh, I was really interested in saving energy. That's why I got into this field. Uh, the power MOSFET uh, was a seminal invention that, that I think saved about 15% of the world's energy. About the turn of the century, I realized that uh, silicon was uh, running out of headroom. It was near its theoretical limits, at least in the world of power. And so um, I started getting interested in GAN. By 2007, I started uh, efficient power conversion with my two partners, uh, Joe and, and Bob. And uh, we've been uh, working on killing silicon ever since. <laughs> so can you talk to us a little bit about uh, what types of and power devices EPC specifically manufactures? So we manufacture devices that are made on a standard silicon wafer, but we grow a very thin layer of crystalline gallium nitride. Gallium nitride is a far superior semiconductor. In that gallium nitride, we make uh, power discrete transistors as well as integrated circuits. And those ICs and discretes far outperform their uh, silicon ancestors in the world of power conversion. And uh, so we are making big inroads, not just in uh, very early adopter markets like uh, LIDAR systems and uh, base station envelope tracking systems, but now we're, we're also infiltrating power supplies that go into mainstream servers and, uh, and computers. So how do you see, you know, GAN performance capabilities really, where do you see this going and how do you see it improving over the next, I don't know, five years or so? So gallium yeah. nitride transistors today are, are about, at, at 100 volt devices, uh, are about five times smaller than uh, the theoretical limit of silicon. And, and there are many silicon devices you can buy at the theoretical limit. So it's smaller, but it's also about 10 times faster. So if you want speed and you want size, uh, then go with GAN. We also are pricing them about the same as MOSFETs. So there's nothing to not like in all this thing. Uh, at at five, five X smaller than silicon, we are 300 times larger than the theoretical limit for gallium nitride. So year after year, look for improvements in terms of both speed and uh, the size of the, of the device or the power density that it can deliver. You mentioned cost there. Um, you know, can has been known to be more expensive than silicon. So how, you know, how are you counteracting that? Well, I think that, that uh, first of all, the, the purveyors of silicon MOSFETs are perpetuating that rumor. Uh, the, the advantage of GAN is it's a whole lot smaller. So you get many more dye on a single wafer that you manufacture and the yields are extraordinarily good. So I think that that's a myth. Uh, we've, for the last couple of years, been pricing our products uh, right around the same pricing as MOSFETs. Uh, and the people who uh, ask for those prices uh, tend, tend to stop believing the myths. So you mentioned earlier, Brian, I'm sorry, did you, did you want to say something? No. So you mentioned earlier, um, you've been, you know, kind of setting out to kill silicon, right? And you've been quoted uh, saying GAN is making a frontal assault on silicon. So what, what do you mean by that? So initially, when we, when we started in, the, in 2007 and started delivering our first production products in 2010, uh, we knew we had uh, more expensive products than silicon in those days, but they were also much higher performance. So the early adopters were those people that just couldn't do it with silicon. Uh, good examples are, are LiDAR that are used in all the autonomous vehicles. Those were, those were early adopters of our GAN devices, and they just couldn't do it any other way. Um, but as we got our costs down, um, we realized that we could be directly competitive with silicon, but you don't want to make a frontal assault across a broad, broad range. So what we did was we, put, we picked our first point of assault 
at the 48 volt input node, whether it be for motor drives or for power supplies. And that has been very, very good because we are uniformly better than MOSFETs and we're priced about the same as MOSFETs there. So what applications, what applications sort of are the best potential for the GAN, for GAN IC? So, so GAN will do anything that silicon will do, but it'll do it better. Uh, uh, but the, the hot applications initially were, were things like, um, uh, well, as I keep saying, LIDAR systems for autonomous vehicles and robots. That's in very high volume right now. Also envelope tracking that's used in base stations uh, to save a lot of energy and improve the power. Uh, that's another one that's in volume production. Um, and then as we went into the frontal assault starting about a year ago, um, high, high power density computing, such as you get in AI or cloud computing, are bringing 48 volt power supplies onto the server board as opposed to them being off in the rack. Uh, and that's becoming a very high volume application for GAN as well. You mentioned the 48 volt um, as being your, your starting point. Is that why you started there? Um, because of the applications that it could be used in? Yeah, so the, the, the Roman philosopher Seneca uh, came up with the sentence that uh, luck is what happens when opportunity meets preparation. <laughs> uh, and and um, I think that uh, the, the, the preparation was making a GAN device that was higher performance and lower cost. Uh, the opportunity is design, op design windows opening up. And so we looked at where is there a large market where there's a lot of design windows opening up, and that was 48 volts for computing. Because of this, uh, this structural change of having the 48 volt power supply go from a heavy uh, rack uh, onto a very, very uh, you know, tightly packed board where space is at a premium, heights at a premium, and power uh, uh, efficiency is at a premium, and that, uh, that is exactly what's happening. The Open Compute Project started seven, seven or so years ago by IBM and Facebook has really resulted in a migration towards architectures on the f of 48 volts on the board and going to even lower voltages on the intermediate bus stage. It used to be 12 volts, now it's going down to five or six volts. And that is uh, uh, you know, just opening up an increased advantage to GAN because GAN is better the wider the input to output ratio is. So we talked earlier a little bit about the future, but let's talk about today. Um, how quickly are production volumes increasing when it comes to GAN ICs? Well, GAN ICs uh, are at a very early stage. So production volumes in 2019 are probably 5X what they were last year, and it's still a meaningless number in the scheme of silicon. Um, and I would imagine it'll be 10X next year. Uh, but what we are seeing with gallium nitride is because it's easier to integrate than silicon, it's a you know, uh, interesting uh, story all by itself, uh, we can make full power systems on a chip. Uh, and we've done that for LiDAR systems, and now we're doing it for DC to DC converters. Uh, and and uh, those are still in beta stage. When those get widely released, I imagine we'll see a very large adoption starting in 2020. And then we can also make motor drives uh, that are uh, very heavily integrated uh, in gallium nitride. And I think for things like drones or wherever lightweight and high efficiency is important, you're going to see GAN taking over. Now, what about EPC? Where is EPC in terms of you know, reliability with its portfolio of GAN FETs and ICs? So reliability is something we worried about from day one. Uh, I'd learned that from my early days with MOSFETs, that the, the incumbent will attack you on reliability because it's easy to spread rumors. Uh, oh, be careful, that new technology, you can't you know, watch <laughs> out for it, right? Um, so we attacked it uh, in a way that, that is, uh, I'll say, fairly um, uh, unique. Uh, and, and we looked at test to fail. Uh, we, don't, we, we, we qualified our devices using all the standard qualification processes, but we also take all our devices and find out exactly where they fail under all the different stress conditions. And then we go back to the root cause, we find the root cause, we make it tougher and more rugged there, and then you know, rinse and repeat. Uh, and in so doing, we've created an incredibly reliable portfolio of products. In the last uh, three years, we've tracked almost 100 billion hours in automotive and telecom applications, and we've had three, three device failures. That's about two orders of magnitude better than the best silicon. 
And I would caution the silicon people because their reliability is actually getting worse while gallium nitrides is quite extraordinary. So they maybe need to go back to first principles too. Right. You talked about, you know, the growth and, and how that looks when, you know, we talk about robotics and drones and AI and all, all the future, future things or the things that are going to grow. Do you see it exponentially growing because of those or are there other applications? I know we talked about automotive and even, you know, power, um, you know, and things like that. Do you, do you really see it, the, the growth being uh, partially tied to robotics and AI? So in the early days of the power MOSFET, the growth was based on new applications. Right. And it, the incumbent at the time was the bipolar transistor. And it basically just chugged along with legacies. That's what's happening with MOSFETs. Um, and in about 1988, the power MOSFET became cheaper than the bipolar transistor. And then people dumped their legacies. Uh, so now the GAN is actually getting to be equal or even cheaper than silicon. Legacy applications are going to start converting. So we'll see the big growth markets as being 100% GAN. Why do anything else? And then the legacies, you know, the purchasing agents are going to start pushing the engineers to redesign some of these old things to save money or improve it. And then they'll go GAN as well. So Alex, we have a, a couple of, of nice questions for future engineers. But before we go there, you have a textbook out, correct? Yes, um, we do. I even have it sisters. right here. Let me show it to you. <laughs> That's what it looks like. <laughs> Tell us about the book. So this is the third edition. It's published by uh, John Wiley. You can get it on Amazon. Uh, you can get it on our website. Uh, and it's really designed for the, uh, the power conversion engineer who wants to be at the state of the art. Uh, we go through the how devices are made, the physics behind them, why GAN is better, and then we go through uh, the foundations of how to use it, how to lay out, how to take advantage thermally of these devices, and then we go through application by application, whether it be DC to DC, Class D audio, LiDAR, uh, wireless power, uh, motor drives, and we go through all of those uh, very carefully to show people how to design for best performance. So if you're an engineer and you want to get into the world of power conversion, you're just graduating or, or, or something like that, you don't want to get into the history book. You want to get into the future. Uh, and, and I think that no, no, nobody would really even doubt that silicon carbide, gallium nitride, those are technologies that are up and coming as opposed to you know, slowly dying away. So would you say the target audience is really for the brand new emerging engineer or seasoned engineers as well can benefit? Well, uh, I think the seasoned engineer who's ambitious and wants to learn new things, yes, sir. That's exactly what, what we need. Um, and, uh, you know, to, to avoid those young bucks coming up and taking their jobs. <laughs> uh, but it, it's clear that more and more of the design work is going to be in GAN. Uh, so best be the best at that. <laughs> So and this what, is the only textbook. So, I mean, <laughs> I, I hope others come out, but this is the way to find out <laughs> right. how to do it. That's awesome. So what, what advice would you actually give, um, you, know, you know, inspiring engineers or emerging engineers that are just coming into the market in, in sort of the future and what they need to look at in terms of their career or being entrepreneurs or anything like yourself? You know, you've developed some really great things, you know, over your career. What advice would you give them? Well, I think that, that young engineers uh, coming right out of school, they, A, they need to take risks. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think that the, the mistake would be a young engineer going into a, a, a very large, stable old company that's just churning old designs. Uh, go with something new. Go with new technologies. Uh, I think that uh, certainly gallium nitride and silicon carbide are exciting. Everything is, is not only new, but is changing. And if you really enjoy that kind of a, uh, I'll say, exciting but hardworking atmosphere, that's where you'll succeed. And 30 years from now, you'll probably have your own companies doing this, or you'll be at CEOs of semiconductor companies doing this, or, or power conversion companies. That's awesome. Yes, that's great advice. Thank you, Alex. I, I do have a question, you know, so as the engineering community continues to adopt GAN and its designs and, you know, and the engineers are, are like, they're, they're trying to implement them, right? And how are, you know, how are you guys kind of supporting that design in effort? You know, how, how are we supporting? And, and what about the, those who are 
you know, opposing and resistant to change? You know, how are you supporting the new the newcomers and, and those who are implementing this into their designs? Yeah, that's a big part of what we do. You know, I, I draw the analogy, if you, if you drove a car your whole life and it was a stick shift Volkswagen and then somebody gave you the keys to a Ferrari and said, you have to drive it as fast as you can, you would probably run off the road pretty quickly. Um, and it, it's the same between the power MOSFET and GAN. GAN is very fast, uh, it's very small, uh, and therefore you need to have more refined design and uh, manufacturing skills in order to implement it well. So we have teams of people that go out and uh, not only train manufacturing areas on assembling these things, but also if you're having problems, we have teams that will go out and help you with those problems. And the same with, with layout and design. We have people all over the world positioned to go into customers, particularly we go in when it's a first time user, we immediately go in there and, and offer our services to work with the design, to help with the design, to validate the design. Um, and, and that's important, and that's advice I'd give to anybody going in there with, with gallium nitride is avail yourself of that help. And then, of course, we have videos on all of these topics, and we have a textbook. Uh, we work with schools, and then we also have a lot of development kits. So people can, can buy development kits off our website that um, already have all the hard design work done, and all you have to do is plug your banana pins in, and, and you can make something work. Uh, probably better than you could ever make it work with silicon. So Brian, am I forgetting anything? I, I know we covered a whole lot and <laughs> very quickly. No, Is there anything I, you wanted to, to add in there, Brian? No, I think I think uh, gave us a lot of information, Alex. Um, you know, thank thank you for your time today. What else, well, Alex? Thank what you, you very What much. would you like to leave us with? Well, I, I'd just like to say that we have a, uh, a real library of information uh, from all levels. Uh, uh, the beginner all the way through to the to the PhD level that's been working in GAN um, on our website. It's uh, www.epc-co.com, uh, and you can buy products right off the website. Everything we have is in stock. Uh, we don't have vaporware out there, um, and all our literature is available online. So, so that's a place to start. Awesome! Thank you so much for your time, Alex. We really appreciate. It. All right, Nicolette and Brian, thank you so much. Thank you.